Hey everybody, I know it's been a while since we've had an update and that is honestly because it has been an absolute crazy couple of months between multiple different venues that we've been doing educational things at, having actual vending different reptile events and expos, going to and from a bunch of different places. We're wrapping up on everything of selling our house up in Denver as well as dealing with some stuff with our puppies. So we finally have like three days to hopefully record a bunch of videos before we go and do another educational thing at the Pueblo, uh, the Pueblo Reptile Expo, which this video may or may not be coming out before then. So if it comes up before, go check it out. And if it comes out afterwards, uh, hey, if you guys came and the local Colorado people, I hope you had fun and learned some things. So without further ado, let's go check out our new, uh, well, new facility and see how things are coming along. So we first come in. We have, uh, before we kind of had these up before, we have our little snake hooks. I'm starting to find like designated places for things is really what we're working on too. So we have these snake hooks and the fly swatters hanging up here and then we'll have other different utensils and things here. This is kind of my staging area for the different venues and shows. So like the little accessory kits that we build, just the little tub box to display our t-shirts our good buddy here, some other different things that I have here, stuff to build them, as well as we're starting to do these kind of cool like little snake shed things for the educational events. We have a bunch of different ones, different sizes and stuff. This is from Juliet, our carpet python. We even have some really cool ones where you can actually see like the tricolor. This is from our Thayer's King Snake. But we're gonna go this way, come back, and then we're gonna go that way. So we're gonna go this way around. So. As I said before, it's been an absolute crazy couple of months. Really, the last couple of weeks have been absolutely insane, and we're still working on some stuff. So here's my uh, very poorly built one. You can tell that I did it because it's not quite level, so it doesn't quite work out like that. Uh, our black headed python who gave me a nice little present, which is awesome. Thank you, girl. Um, here, uh, we moved our northern pine snake Shoshone up here. Um, the warlock, the bear dragon who hates everything and Remus here, so these nice little stack of four by two enclosures that we are, in addition to everything else, slowly upgrading and organizing and revamping, including two of the new VivTech uh, Sursun bulbs here. And then we're gonna keep on trucking along. So first, the big stack of cages. This is where Lily, our adult female Doomerol's bow is gonna go, uh, but she is uh, breeding and mating right now. So I'm gonna wait for her to hopefully pop some babies. So it'll be a little while before she moves into here, but this will be for Lily. This is for Cupcake, the world's giantest boa ever, um, who is currently over there. She spends a lot of her time um, during the midday, right in, in her little box. In the morning, she'll come over here under the light and on the hot spot, and then the rest of the day, she's usually over here. Yang, obviously doing her thing. Um, you may notice that she is still on paper. That is because she has ingested substrate several times before and I don't want to cause medical issues with her. So that's why she's on paper and her coming out and interacting with everybody, that's her uh, way of interacting and getting a little bit of mental stimulation. So she gets to come out a lot more frequently than she has or has, than she ever has before. And at some point I'll also make maybe like a nice big hide or platform for her in there. Um, but you know, small baby steps of doing things. So we keep on coming along. We have our tegus. Um, this is the yellowtail male Kribo. He is currently in quarantine because he is being an educational animal a little bit. And so whenever an animal goes to an event, even if no one else touches him, he still goes in quarantine for at least a week um, to make sure that there's nothing popping out. So it's actually more like two to three weeks, really. And then he'll come back in here just to make sure that he's doing okay. Our old blue tegu has cataracts, mid shed, Orion, our other black wine tegu, and then, yes, I'm aware of, of, of that. And then down here is Sev, who was out earlier, um, but she is our other Guyana red tail boa. Um, so Cupcake and, uh, and Sev here are two Guyana boas that we will hopefully be pairing up with a male. I got some stuff coming down the road, so we'll just leave it at that. Um, we'll do this side and this side. So still coming along. There's this nice big empty gap right here. Um, this will, excuse me, this will eventually, um, I'm going to repurpose and refurbish, hopefully at least most of these, into another big rack. But for this big area right here, I actually want to put a stack 
of PVC or like the Zen type habitat enclosures, four by twos, right here. And I'll have some larger, uh, cause I wanna do larger enclosures versus more animals. So I'm gonna have a nice stack of probably four or five, four by two enclosures right here. And then have some of the other animals that I may or may not have already move into here. Then this is our nice little double-sided baby rack. Um, it's not plugged in right now because we're out of babies for uh, the 2021 season. Hopefully we have some more coming right now. Um, I can pull it out and spin it around, or hopefully I'll still be able to squeeze in there one way or the other. This way, coming along here, obviously the iguana and redfoot cage. In here, they're all eating. Nice big salad. They have a bunch of veggies and fruit under there, but gotta make them dig, eat their veggies and greens first. So, Zuli up there, then Queenie, Kaiju, the Todd, Betty, and Boa Bob. And yes, frequent water changes needed throughout. They were filled this morning. That one's empty, that one is gross, and this one they're working on too. So, you know, a water change at least every single day. Tortoises are a lot of work, everybody. Um, this, because San Luis Valley is very dry where we are, um, and so frequent, and so even though this has been insulated with a nice marine paint, this is their ventilation, a little bit from that, uh, from the, from the door, as I mentioned before in the iguana cage enclosure video that we did, this is the door from the old aviary back when we were in Denver, so repurpose and such, uh, keeping it kind of country, but a little bit of, you know, sitting into that, and then over here, we have kind of what is going to be like the utility closet or the janitor's corner, so we have some more of our utensils, our mops, the Swiffer, the broom here. Um, this is where our sink will be for actually cleaning everything. And there's a water uh, thing here. So that way we're gonna have water come here. We'll have a nice little like long overhanging hose. We can dry here on this really cool Formica thing here. It's got some, uh, some storage there. And then here is our rack of bowls and hides and things that are continuously being changed out. Um, like some of these older ones I'm probably gonna be getting rid of soon just because I wanna make sure they stay very clean and sanitary. Um, this is our grow out, hold back, little tiny snake um, rack here. Like, so for instance, here she is. This was our Cleveland. So Cleveland uh, is our male banana genetic stripe and he produced and proved out our female that was a het girl. Um, and so they produced banana genetic stripes just like him because she did prove out het genetic stripe and they managed to throw one female. So out of all of them, she actually didn't have the best full stripe of the genetic stripe like her dad or a lot of her other siblings, but she's a girl. So we kept her and then she gave a nice little shed under here. So while I'm here, I'm just going to pull that out. Um, then our super fire girl, our pin pied male, because I only have one male pied um, and then the banana cinnamon boy down here. And then the rest is all just kind of hanging out for the time being. Um, this is unfortunately just a really gross looking corner. Just kind of collect them all for a bunch of lumber because I don't have where else to put it right now. Um, our little hippo, um, here she is right there. As I mentioned in the uh, video that I did with them, I wanted to get them a much larger enclosure. So that's what I did. Unfortunately, uh, they were already full grown adults when we got them, already a few years old. We had him for a couple of years and we unfortunately did lose Tilly, one of ours, so she's the only one. So we like to play with her a little bit more often than we certainly did before. Now she doesn't have a buddy, unfortunately. Um, here is the incubator that has served us well for the last couple seasons. Right now, this is the only one that is running. Um, and then there's a little tiny one there too. Um, eventually this will be turned into one. And uh, we had, this fridge came with the house, one of the houses, uh, when we got it and it was not working very more. Both the motor and the Freon and the condenser were all kind of messed up. Not really anything we really want to do with it. So this will be turned into either a brumation thing or turned into another incubator. Continuing right along, this is going to be the bottom of the eventual Mertens monitor because I will get that Mertens monitor. I'm gonna have someone who does custom PVC stuff build like a big topper for this. So that way he'll have the access to all down here. And then he can have this whole above area here. Um, these are, so down here we have um, Angelina and Dean are uh, just kind of essentially given to us uh, sand boas, our uh, Kenyan sand boas. And then a couple grow out uh, colubrids that are basically just kind of kept ambient here now that we finally figured out the temperatures. Um, corn snake, a male corn snake and our female gray banded. 
Um, this area is going to eventually be six foot cages. So for some of our other larger snakes, uh, possibly indigos down the road, some of the boa constrictors, they'll be going here. Um, and so Still a work in forth. progress, obviously. I'm telling you kind of where I want to do different things. So for right here, um, this is, again, this is like the rack we use for one of the things. Um, don't buy Walmart furniture. This is what you get. We have two piecemeal ones that will be combined into one. Um, this is recycling, extra stuff, trash, utility stuff, lights for the videos. And then this big shelf, which was not stained or clean because no animals are ever going to be on it. Um, this is basically storage for substrates of the different varieties, paper towels, uh, you know, vermiculite, uh, all excess little thing. These two tubs are both filled with stuff to go into enclosures and racks for enrichment. Um, this is a cart that will now be moved around a little bit more that we can use as more of a utility cart as well. Um, I plan on putting a probably, I'm hoping to eventually, we'll see how it goes, like an indoor pond for right here. Because um, if I have not mentioned before, I really got started into all things animal with aquariums and freshwater fish. And my absolute favorites were always Oscar cichlids and African cichlids. And so in our uh, Asian rat snake and gecko room, we have an Oscar cichlid with something sitting in the middle of that room, which that'll be a whole other video. Um, but I really miss my African cichlids. So I have a big 150 gallon trough um, that I will potentially be making into an African cichlid tank, or maybe I'll turn into South American cichlids with like angel fish and stuff. Haven't decided, we'll see if we'll do that or not. Um, toolbox cart. Uh, we finally, if you've noticed, we have a lot more of the art up everywhere. Um, still don't know what I'm going to do with those car uh, pictures up there. I don't know. They're not really hurting anything. I don't really, not a car guy or anything, but those are still there. Um, Juliet is hanging out in here, who also gave me a nice little surprise. So thank you, Juliet. Um, this is going to continue to be more storage area. So this is like all my heating elements and light bulbs. This will eventually be another Dubia colony. Um, and then other storage and extra things needed for that. Um, here is again our giant lineup and wall of racks. Um, essentially what it is right now is these are all boas. Some of them will be moving over there into other enclosures and bigger cages and things like that. Because eventually I want to move out of a lot of my boas, specifically my female larger boas, into much larger enclosures. Even though these are pretty big tubs to begin with. Um, and then I'm going to make one more of like this size, the 74, the 70 quart tub racks. I'm going to put one more right there for ball pythons. Um, maybe cluberts, haven't decided yet. Um, and then I'm going to build a larger baby rack here and then potentially one more Christmas tree tub rack. Haven't decided. I got to find some more clear Christmas tree tubs because the ones that I ended up getting here, um, super cheap, but opaque. And I don't like that. I like the clear ones. So that way they can at least get like a day night cycle. Um, can't have a Jay-Z's video without Mountain Dew in the photo. And then, so over here, all the racks, everything like that. Um, we had to do a little bit of like changing and mixing around. So now these are colubrids, bottom of those are colubrids, and then all of the baby ball pythons. I've now shifted away from a lot of the smaller tubs of the racks to more of these larger ones to where I will have a smaller ball python in one of these larger tubs and I'll just fill it with a bunch of clutter and they're all doing just fine. So, and then for this wall, this is honestly going to be the largest work in progress. Um, every single one of these, will I'll have eventually two more, maybe three more of these up top that will all be individual species and things like that. And then eventually what I would love to do is actually get some kind of custom sized PVC enclosures that will fit here and maybe one more down there, haven't quite decided which will be for other species of like larger pythons and things like that. They don't necessarily get like boa constrictor reticulated python sized type animals, but larger constrictors that I will not be having in tubs um, just for a little bit more display purposes. So, you know, we have the lizard here. This was Shoshone, so no, nothing's in here. Um, O'Malley, our Mexican black pine, king snake, Mexican black king snake, will be moving into here. Our trio of African fat tails. Um, that's the extra one in case the fat tails ever start to f ever decide to start fighting I can pull one of the males out as I've mentioned before. I don't have the trio that I'd ever recommend um, The woodhouse toad in here a little rescue leopard gecko who clearly is doing a lot better uh, than when we very first got her Just a spare 10 gallon tank that 
Um, I don't remember, somebody was in at one point and moved it here. This is our Sandfish, uh, Milk Snake, Gray Banded King Snake, Nez Pierce, the Blair's Phase, our Trans Pecos Rat Snake, Rosie, the Rosy Boa, um, the, this is our bioactive uh, Thayer's King Snake setup, which uh, she very, he very promptly killed one of the plants in there, the aloe, uh, the, not the aloe, the agave is still doing really well in here. This is our little baby sulcata tortoise, and yes, there is a UVB light stuck to the bottom of this tub. No, I'm not a monster. He's just a little small because our larger sulcata tortoise, uh, which is another reason why I've waited so long to do this video was I wanted to get all the animals here. We were waiting for speed bump and pine cone. So we're going to go ahead and show you their enclosure, at least for the time being right now. So this cage, this last Alexoterra, this is where Mali is. This is going to go away. Um, and then again, hopefully some larger PVC enclosures, he'll be moving there. And that's really about it over here. So here's some more of our grow out stuff. Um, Essentially, they are just kind of grow out things in general. We have a couple different colubrids, the Angolan pythons, although one is in quarantine because she went to an expo for an educational video, and eventually they'll be shifting over here, and some of these guys will be moving to these ones. I just have to put heat tape on that one rack that you saw that was empty, and then some more people will be shifting along. And this is our office, our shared office, because uh, partner runs her own business, and she helps me do all of the paperwork and finances and tax stuff for this one, so partners are the best. Um, this is the wall that we do our little podcast on. And now we're going to go out to where the tortoises are going to be. Okay. So I've talked a little bit about it. So essentially, so here's that big bay door that the, uh, that big whiteboard is attached to. So we're like the kind of pile of cardboard and stuff is that's this right here. And then this is attached. So when we got this and obviously you can see this has been put here, it's been super windy. So I just kind of had to shove and tuck this right here. This is what's left over from the old uh, aviary that the iguanas and tortoises were in. Hopefully we'll make that into a little bit of a greenhouse. And so this is now the tortoise shed for the indoor times of the year. So here's Speed Bump, who obviously has been feasting a little bit. Um, so as I, I think I mentioned before, this used to be a chicken coop when we very first got this. That's what they used this for. Um, so essentially what we did was I cleaned it all out. I added more uh, more insulation throughout, closed up that, insulated that. Uh, I'm going to be putting some weather strip in here because essentially this door I'm never going to use because uh, it's elevated off the ground. So I'm going to weather strip that up a little bit. This table will be used for some smaller tortoise species that I want to get, specifically pancake tortoises. So if anybody's bringing pancake tortoises, let me know. Um, so this is where we're going to go. I'm just going to put like a larger trough on this table here. So like one of those like big metal troughs or something, I'm going to have it stretch right here. Probably pull this off so that we can take up this whole area and I can have lights over that for these guys and then I can physically pick them up and have them outside during the summer when it's warm for these guys so a big mercury vapor bulb we have an actual heater here there's pine cone hiding behind the door um, water and then another heat just in case because it does get pretty chilly in here uh, during the winter times so I don't know if you've watched my other videos or looked into Colorado gators and stuff it's one of the coldest places in the country, frequently below negative 10 a lot of the winter. So that's basically it. And then out here and kind of wrapping around and going back is where eventually I will have their outdoor area to where I'm going to get one of like, essentially it's going to be like that tortoise fencing where they're like sunken in like little posts, separated a little bit like that. Um, so that way they can't get out and it'll be you know probably like this high. So the butthole dogs will still probably do something about it. But essentially I'll have like kind of from here, I'll just have it kind of go up and around that area. I'll pull all of these rocks and stuff out of here and I'll probably start to seed some like wild plants and grass and stuff for them to enjoy and move around. And obviously they'll still have access to that. Um, and this will only bring during the summer nice and sunny times, but Speed Bump clearly is enjoying the nice UVB. We're a lot higher and closer to the sun here. So he's enjoying that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this nice little update. Just kind of showing you where we've been, what we're getting up to, plans for the future. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, want to know about babies that we have coming along, I plan to hopefully do a video. I'll do little mini videos and stuff and posting on Instagram and maybe TikTok. I'm awful about it. Um, 
giving you updates on those guys. I plan to at least attend all of the Colorado Expos this year and potentially be uh, kind of joining up with a couple other of the uh, younger generation breeders and keepers and going to a, maybe a couple of the other ones a little out of state, maybe Texas, maybe Kansas, um, maybe uh, one in the Chicago Tinley area. Uh, won't be vending Tinley, obviously, but maybe, maybe attending that. And so hopefully I can actually meet and interact with some of you guys. Hope everyone's having a great day and we will check you next time.